After one of the great kung fu masters is defeated by the peacock who eliminated his parents, Po embarks on a journey to the imperial city where he must fight to avenge his family and find the path to inner peace. Today we're going to recap the story of the 2011 movie, Kung Fu Panda 2. At the beginning of ancient China, a couple of peacocks became the owners of Gongmen City after creating fireworks. However, their heir Lord Shen had other plans for gunpowder and used it to develop a new type of weapon. Worried about their son's fate, the peacock couple went to a fortune-telling goat who predicted that Shen would be defeated by a black and white warrior. Wanting to prevent this from happening, the young lord went with his entire army to the panda's village and eliminated each one of them, returning to the city as if he had defeated fate, but his parents didn't approve of what he had done and decided to exile their own son. Furious, Shen vowed to return in a few years to carry out his revenge and make all of China bow at his feet. In the present day, Lord Shen is making new versions of the weapons when he realizes that he has run out of metal. As production cannot stop, the peacock orders his men to pass through the villages and loot everything they can, but without him knowing, this brings him into direct contact with his destiny. Unaware of the prophecy, Po is eating in the Jade Palace when the Shifu master calls him to talk under the dragon waterfall. When his pupil arrives at the place, the red panda says it's time to learn one of Ogwe's last lessons and talks about inner peace, which gives the warrior such calm that he can handle even a drop of water. Shifu then says that there are several paths to inner peace and that Po must find his own, and only then can he become a true kung fu master. While the dragon warrior is trying to understand what Shifu said, Tigris arrives at the village warning of an attack by a group of bandits and Po jumps off the cliff to save the village. In the city, the wolves ransack the houses and stores looking for metal as Shen ordered, but just as they are ready to leave, Po arrives accompanied by the Furious Five in style. As soon as he sees the dragon warrior, the wolf general is surprised to see a living panda and orders all his men to go after him, but unlike the others Shen has hunted, Po is a master of martial arts and manages to dodge the attacks with extreme ease. With the help of the praying mantis, the panda manages to escape unscathed from several arrows and runs to the roof of a building where he fights alongside the tigress to defeat his enemies. While Shifu's disciples fight with his men, the wolf chief finishes tying the metal and howls for the soldiers to pull the ropes, but a pig ends up being taken along and Master Crane has to fly to break the cable. As a result, the piglet starts to fall and Poe throws himself into the abyss to rescue him, forcing the other four Furious Five to form a chain to pull them back. While everyone is celebrating, the Chief of the Wolves appears out of nowhere ready to smash Poe in the face, but as his enemy runs towards him, the panda notices a red symbol on the shoulder of the armor that triggers memories of his childhood. Almost in a trance, the dragon warrior ends up taking the hammering even though he is able to defend himself. Finding it strange, the Furious Five ask what happened and why he didn't defend himself. But Poe decides to pretend it was nothing and runs straight to his father's restaurant. Serving several customers on his own, Mr. Ping is collecting some dirty dishes when his son shows up asking to talk. Back in the kitchen, Poe tells him about the fight with the bandits and talks about the vision he had with his mother, finally getting up the courage to ask where he came from. With no options left, Mr. Ping finally decides to tell him that he was adopted and talks about the day he met him. Ping says that he had been waiting for more than a week for a shipment of vegetables, but when it arrived, he realized that the box of radishes was completely empty thanks to a small panda inside that had devoured everything. Not knowing what to do, the goose spent the next few days waiting for someone to show up looking for the baby, but when they didn't, he decided to adopt it and call it Po, taking care of the panda as if it were his son. Even though he is grateful for everything Mr. Ping has done, Po is disappointed that he doesn't know the rest of his story and as a result he drifts further and further away from inner peace. In the center of Gongmen City, Croc and Storming Oxmasters are training when Lord Shen invades the city and orders them to leave his house. As soon as they see the peacock, the three of them say that the city is under their protection and that it is the peacock who must leave. However, Shen was already expecting this and orders his men to bring a box with his newest weapon, which he promises will be able to blow up all three of them at once. To prevent him from using this weapon, the ox goes after the peacock, who pulls him by the horn, as well as throwing the crocodile away, managing to deal with both of them easily thanks to his metallic feathers. Even so, the thundering rhino is on his feet and manages to stop Shen with his kung fu, but the peacock lord doesn't give up and decides to use his weapon, which fires a cannonball that hits the rhinoceros master straight on. In the Jade Palace, Shifu receives a scroll telling him about the perishment of thundering rhino and the danger that Lord Shen's cannon means for China, leaving him with no choice but to send his disciples to destroy the weapon and defeat the peacock. With a long journey ahead of them, Shifu's six disciples begin their journey towards Gongmen City while Shen produces even more weapons to keep himself in power. In the middle of the journey, 
the warriors of the Jade Palace are taking a nap while sailing on a ferry, when Po has a dream about his biological parents, who, unlike he imagined, have exchanged their son for a radish. Suddenly, his vegetable brother gets out of his mother's lap and starts spinning towards the panda like a Beyblade, hitting him in the stomach with various kung fu techniques. After being defeated in his dream, Po wakes up frightened and decides to go on deck to try and achieve inner peace, but he's too restless to do so. Realizing her friend's difficulty, Tigress offers to help and together they begin to train, but she notices that the panda isn't concentrating and decides to ask what's wrong. Po then tells her that he has discovered that Mr. Ping is not his father and Tigress is surprised that he never realized it. Suddenly, the other of the Furious Five wake up and join in the conversation to try to console the dragon warrior, but they are interrupted by the Tigress who tells them that they have finally arrived in Gongmen City. In the center of the city, Shen approaches his father's old throne and throws it out of the castle, putting his powerful cannon in its place and claiming that he will leave in three days to conquer the rest of China. Wanting to know his future, the peacock lord goes to the fortune teller and asks her to read his new future, but the fortune telling animal continues with the same prophecy, claiming that his destiny is to be defeated by a black and white warrior. Shen says it's impossible and claims that he destroyed all the pandas more than 20 years ago, but his general arrives at that very moment and proves him wrong, telling him that he spotted a panda near the Jade Palace. Furious, the peacock throws the wolf to the ground and orders him to bring back the panda at any cost. Near the city's port, the Shifu's disciples jump off the boat and climb the fortress walls to locate Shen's palace, but as the place is full of soldiers, they will need to advance without being seen. As he is completely crazy, Po advances through the middle of the streets, hiding behind the pillars while the Furious Five quickly advance through the roof. Trying to go unnoticed, Po hides his face behind a potted plant and passes through some tents. However, he ends up being spotted by one of the mongrels and has to pretend to be a saleswoman to distract him, knocking him out straight away. At that moment, the Furious Five realize that Po is not among them and start looking for him, finding him hiding in a Chinese dragon costume. After the panda accidentally sets fire to a fireworks stand, the Furious Quintet also gets into the costume and together they make their way towards the castle, but they find one of the wolves threatening a peasant girl on the way and Poe decides to help her by devouring the soldier. Inside, the Furious Five team up to knock out the wolf and throw him out the back, allowing them to talk to the sheep who tells them about the whereabouts of the master's storming ox and croc. As soon as he learns that they are still alive, Poe decides to change his goal and releases the sheep to head for the prison, but the wolf general notices his movements and orders his men to go after the dragon costume. Even though they can't see properly, the Shifu's disciples manage to escape through the alleyways and devour every wolf they come across, as if they were Pac-Man. After some time of chasing, Shen's soldiers manage to corner the costume and stick their swords into the fabric, but when they take the cloth off, they realize that Poe's group has gone and left only vegetable boxes in place. While the wolves search for them, the Furious Five hide inside barrels and go to the jail where the Mantis knocks out the guards at the door. Inside, the Tigress and the Crane deal with the remaining soldiers and Poe goes to look for his masters while the monkey keeps watch. After a while, the panda manages to find the storming ox and the crocodile and Tigress opens the cell so that they can get out, but unlike what they imagined, neither of them wants to escape to face Shen, as they are afraid that he will use the weapon against the city. Wanting to change their minds, Po breaks into the cell and does everything he can to get them out, but the other Kung Fu masters refuse to leave and recommend that he surrenders, saying that this new weapon will replace martial arts. Tired of trying to get them to change their minds, the panda decides to leave them behind and head for Lord Shen on his own, but before they can even leave, they are met by the wolf chief and his men, who are easily neutralized by the monkey and the crane. Desperate, the wolf runs outside where he grabs a cart and drives all the way through town, but Po refuses to be left behind and comes after him. To lose him, the leader of Shen's army knocks over some boxes and throws rabbit cubs in the panda's face, blocking his vision and causing him to run straight through some scaffolding of a building under construction. Still with the bunnies on his face, Po balances himself on two ropes until he realizes that he's heading straight for a building. The panda then throws the babies up in the air and the crane manages to catch them, but his cart still crashes into the wall and is almost completely destroyed, turning into a unicycle. With the general just ahead, Po asks for help from the tigress, who gives him a boost that will enable him to reach the wolf's carriage. On top of the vehicle, the two of them fight incessantly until the cart comes down the stairs and jumps down a ramp, throwing them both up and causing Po to land on top of the wolf. Thinking he has won, the dragon warrior begins to celebrate until an army of archer wolves appears between the walls, leaving the jade warriors with no option but to surrender. Fully chained, they are taken to Shen's palace where Po is impressed by the size of the cannon. Feeling victorious, 
The peacock laughs at the panda for coming up to him in handcuffs and says that his years of planning revenge have gone down the drain, but Poe doesn't know what he's talking about and replies that he learned about Master Reno's perishment a few days ago. Curious, the clairvoyant goat asks if he hasn't come to avenge anything else and Poe replies that he hasn't, which makes Shen realize that the panda has no idea what he's done to his village. The peacock lord laughs and orders his men to point the gun directly at the panda, but without Shen realizing it, the viper manages to free the tigress with its tail while the mantis extinguishes the fuse and knocks out the wolf general. With that, the Shifu students manage to break free and the tigress destroys the weapon while Poe goes after the lord, but when he sees the symbols on the peacock's feathers, the dragon warrior unlocks another piece of his memories and is paralyzed when he realizes that Shen was there the day he lost his family. Thanks to this distraction, the white peacock manages to escape and flies to another building from where he orders his men to fire their cannons, hitting the heron's wing squarely. Knowing they won't be able to resist, the jade warriors jump through the hole left by the weapon and slide down the ropes to the base of the tower. With the building about to collapse, they need to find a way out and the tigress opens a hole in the wall to escape, but they are cornered by a line of archers and the tigress decides that her best option is to come out on top. She then grabs Poe and together they climb the crumbling building, taking advantage of the height of the palace to jump over the fortress and escape over the top of the houses. Frustrated that the panda has escaped, Shen decides to push ahead with the conquest of China and orders his general to prepare the ships to leave as soon as possible. Unaware of the white peacock's plans, the Shifu students hide in the shadows until they arrive back at the prison. There, Master Ox asks what happened and Tigress says she wants to know why Po let Shen escape, but he refuses to tell the truth and Master Tigress decides it's best to keep him away from the action. Refusing to do so, the panda decides to confront his companion for the right to leave, but he still can't concentrate and is easily defeated by her. Left with no options, the panda says he has to find Shen and finally reveals that the peacock was there when he last saw his mother, so Po has to find him if he wants to know what happened to his family. Finally understanding his feelings, Tigress hugs her friend and asks him to stay in prison while she brings Shen back. Already in the center of the Gongmen city fortress, the quintet is thinking of a way to destroy the weapons factory without realizing that, right above them, Po is breaking into the building and manages to knock out the first two guards. With his legendary IQ, the panda advances, holding the unconscious wolves, and manages to get past the general without being noticed. Inside, Po starts looking for his companions and ends up being found by Shen. Wanting to know about his origins, the dragon warrior asks what happened the night he got lost and the peacock lies saying that they abandoned him, cutting the chains of a scalding cauldron that almost makes a panda barbecue. At the bottom, the furious five gather some barrels of gunpowder and throw them all inside the building, but they see that Poe is hanging in the cauldron and they have to put out the wicks so they don't blow up their friend. As a result, their plan falls apart and the Furious Five are left fighting the wolves while Poe confronts Shen at the top of the factory. After getting out of the cauldron, the panda tries to fly at the peacock, who manages to defend himself easily, hitting a low blow that knocks Poe onto the conveyor belt that is taking the metal to the furnace. Realizing that he is in trouble, the other Furious Five stay behind to fight the wolves while sending the tigress ahead to help him, but she ends up being stopped by one of the gorillas. About to fall into the furnace, Poe finds a magnet and uses it to keep himself stuck to the mat until he reaches the other side. With a pot in his hands, the panda lunges at the peacock lord, who throws a few feathers in his direction. Cowardly as ever, the peacock tries one or two blows and then tries to fly away, but the panda refuses to let him escape again and goes after him, throwing the magnet that holds the villain's neck against some boards. After freeing himself, Shen says that Poe's parents abandoned him because they didn't love him and says that he has something perfect to ease their pain, revealing an even bigger cannon behind him. The peacock then shoots at the panda, who tries to defend himself with the pot, but the projectile is extremely powerful and throws him out of the city, causing him to fall into the middle of the river. From the dragon's cave, Shifu immediately realizes that something has happened and interrupts his meditation to look at the horizon while thinking about what to do. Floating down the river, Poe is found by the psychic goat who treats him with acupuncture until he wakes up. When she realizes that Poe is already on his feet, the fortune teller gives him some soup and finally decides to talk about what happened when he was still a baby. The female then asks what he remembers and the panda says he only has a few memories of his mother leaving him in the radish box. To make him remember, the animal tells him that the place they are in used to be an extremely peaceful panda village, but that after the prediction that it would be defeated by a black and white warrior, Lord Shen then went crazy. When the peacock arrived in the village with his army, Poe's father decided to sacrifice himself and stayed behind so that his wife would have time to take the baby away. Remembering his mother's journey through the forest, 
The dragon warrior gets closer and closer to inner peace and can visualize the moment when his mother put him in the radish box, but when he sees that she has left him behind and continued running from Shen, he ends up losing his way to inner peace and is overcome by sadness. Realizing this, the sage tries to calm Po down and reminds him of the friends he's made and everything he's been through to get here, which gives him the determination he needs to lift his head up and face the peacock lord once and for all. At the harbor, the wolf army finally finishes preparing the ships and Shen leaves the Furious Five chained to one of the boats as a trophy, planning to make everyone lose faith in Kung Fu and bow down to him. Following the canal towards the open sea, Shen's fleet comes across a bridge full of citizens and they don't hesitate to shoot at the building to clear the way, but from the roof of one of the buildings, Po is watching everything and challenges the peacock to the final battle. The peacock orders his men to prepare the cannon and the panda swerves from side to side until he gets inside the ship, forcing the wolves to blow out the wicks so as not to destroy themselves. Unable to use his weapons, Shen orders his army to attack the panda, who manages to steal the axe from one of them and throw it towards the Furious Five, who use it to cut the chains. Together, the warriors of the Jade Palace advance from one ship to another when the ox and crocodile masters arrive on the battlefield accompanied by the Shifu, who orders his disciples to use Shen's own boats to block the way. With the new mission, the Furious Five return to the first ships and the Master Crane manages to get the ships stuck at the exit of the canal. Now that the way is blocked, all the warriors advance towards Shen, who, in desperation, decides to fire the giant cannon at his own men to hit Po. With this, the canal is unblocked and the remaining ships can finally enter the high seas. After recovering, Po starts to look around and sees all his companions defeated, but he doesn't give up and swims over to the wreckage to stop Shen's fleet. Thinking that Po has no chance, the peacock orders his men to fire their cannons at the panda, who concentrates until he finds the path to inner peace. With the giant steel ball coming towards him, the dragon warrior controls his breathing and manages to redirect the projectile with extreme ease, doing so with every other shot. After throwing several projectiles into the sea, Po finally decides to strike back and throws the balls towards Shen's fleet, knocking over one boat after another. Unable to believe his eyes, the peacock lord begins to despair and orders the wolves to fire the giant cannon, but even so, the legendary dragon warrior manages to parry the projectile and throw it all back at Shen's ship, which is completely destroyed. Unable to believe his defeat, the peacock wonders how Po managed to find peace and finally decides to take matters into his own hands, using his steel feathers and inaganata to try and slice the panda. While the dragon warrior dodges his attacks, Shen ends up damaging his mast even more, which falls right on top of him, causing several explosions that end up destroying his ship. With this, Po emerges victorious from the fight and the people of Gongmen City can finally celebrate freedom after so long of tyranny. Back at the foot of the Jade Palace, Po goes to visit Mr. Ping and tells him that he has discovered how he ended up in the basket of radishes, but that no matter what, he will always be the son of the best cook in China. But while the two of them are celebrating their reunion, somewhere else in the mountains, Po's real father realizes that his son is alive and tells the other pandas that they will soon be paying a little visit to the Jade Palace. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.